So in my video about gut healthy foods, I mentioned Korean fermented kimchi as one of the healthiest foods for our gut. And so when you go to a Korean or Asian supermarket, there's a wide variety of spicy kimchi made with seafood like shrimp, oyster, or anchovies. And now that I'm in my 40s, I can't handle spicy foods very well. And placing seafood like oyster, shrimp, or anchovies in non-spicy kimchi doesn't taste very good. So I had to create my own vegan non-spicy kimchi. And I really want to share this recipe for those of you who are vegan and who cannot handle spice very well, but still want to get the benefits of fermented kimchi for your gut health. So the first thing you want to do is brine the Napa cabbage in salt water. So you want a large pan like this or a pot like this. And I have some water in there already. And you're going to take salt and use whatever salt you like. This happens to be sea salt, but you could use fine salt if you want. And make sure you add enough salt that the water is salty. <laughs> so be generous with the salt, you know. So then I'm gonna take my egg beater and just dissolve all the salt in the water. And like I said, be pretty generous with the salt because you want the water salty. So it looks like all the salt has melted into the water. And so next, what you're gonna do with your cabbage is you're gonna slice it into quarter. So quarter the cabbage. And then take each quarter and just submerge it under the water. And if you need two pans to do this, then use two pans. But this pan is large enough. So because I really want the kimchi to submerge into the water, I'm gonna take like something heavy, like maybe another glass jar, or you could take like a brick, you know, place foil over the brick and just place it on top so that the kimchi really submerges under the water. And then you're gonna leave it out in room temperature just like this for 24 hours. A lot of times Koreans people leave it out for half a day, but with this recipe, I like to leave it under the submerged water for 24 hours. So I wanna add some carrots to this recipe because carrot has a natural sweetness to it and it'll give it more depth of flavor for this non-spicy vegan kimchi. So I've already peeled and washed my carrots and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slice the carrot into really thin pieces, thin round pieces. So I'll finish slicing the rest of the carrot and then I'll show you what to do next. So next thing I'm gonna do with the carrot is brine it in salt water. So I've got some water in my pot here and I'm just gonna add salt. And use whatever salt you like. This happens to be sea salt. But use, you know, whatever salt you like. You don't have to be really picky about the salt. And make sure you place enough salt so that the brining action really takes place. And then I'm gonna just use my egg beater to 
make sure that the salt is melting in the water because this is room temperature water. This is not hot water, it's just room temperature water. And try to use purified water if you can to get rid of toxins. So then I'm just gonna take my carrot and just let it soak in that salt water. And so you're gonna soak it in this salt water for 24 hours. So you know I mentioned that most spicy kimchi in Asian supermarkets have seafood in them, like an oyster or an anchovy or shrimp, and that's what gives depth of flavor in that kimchi. But because I'm trying to make a non-spicy vegan kimchi, of course I can't use any seafood in this recipe. However, because I still want some of that seafood flavor in my kimchi, instead of using seafood, I'm going to be using seaweed today. And this is kelp seaweed. And you can find this in Asian supermarket or online. Get kelp, K-E-L-P. And so what you're gonna do with the seaweed is you're gonna add water into a large pot and then just drop the seaweed into the water. Place your lid and then turn your flame to high. Once the liquid starts to boil, reduce the flame to low and cook the kelp in the water for 40 minutes, which will allow enough time for all the flavors of the seaweed to really infuse into the water. So we're trying to extract all the flavors of the seaweed right into that water. And then after 40 minutes of simmer cooking the seaweed, then just turn off the flame and just let the water with the kelp just sit there until it cools down and becomes room temperature. So any traditional spicy kimchi recipe has these three ingredients, ginger, garlic, and scallion, or some people call it spring onions. So with the scallion, I just wanna use the stem part of the scallion. And I've got here about six or seven stalks of scallion, so that's what you're gonna use. And I'm just gonna cut off the stem and use only the stem. So you're gonna cut it about here and use the leaves for other recipes. So don't throw that out, just use it for other recipes. But for this kimchi, this is all I need. And then for the garlic, I'm gonna use two bulbs of garlic. And this is about six to seven inches of ginger. You wanna add a lot of garlic and ginger to this kimchi recipe because it gives it that real kimchi flavor profile. So with the garlic, what I'm gonna do is I wanna keep the clove intact. So I'm just gonna go peel it this way. I'm not gonna mince the garlic because I wanna keep the garlic intact. So I'll just peel it with my smaller knife. And I'm gonna use two bulbs of garlic. So this is gonna take me a little time to peel two bulbs of garlic. And you know, in Asian supermarkets, they already have garlic that's already peeled. So if you don't wanna peel it yourself, then just buy the garlic that's already been peeled. So you wanna use two bulbs of garlic. And then the ginger, I'll just peel, peel the skin. We'll just go ahead and peel the skin. So the way to slice the ginger is to slice it in big chunks like this. Slice it into big chunks. So I'll finish preparing the rest of the garlic and ginger and next I'll show you what to do. So not all kimchi recipes include onion in it but I want to include some onion 
because I think it makes this non-spicy kimchi taste even better. So you're just gonna use one onion and we're just gonna quarter it. Like I said, just quarter it. So next, we're gonna put it all together with the kelp juice. So the kelp water has now completely cooled down to room temperature. So make sure you cool it down to room temperature. And as you can see, the water has turned yellow from the flavor of the kelp. So this is the color that we're looking for and all the flavors of the kelp has infused into this water. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my measuring cup and I'm gonna add about three cups of this kelp juice into this jar. Get a big jar like this and add three cups of kelp water into the jar. So this is two cups. This is three cups. And then you could take some of that cooked seaweed and also add it in there just to continue with the flavoring. Or you could leave it out, it doesn't matter. That's fine. And I'm now I'm gonna put this aside. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take three cups of pear juice. This is organic pear juice. And so I'm gonna add three cups of pear juice right in there. So three cups of kelp water, three cups of pear juice. And then I'm gonna season it with about one and a half tablespoon of salt and one tablespoon of cane sugar. Now you're thinking, Moon, you're using sugar, but you need sugar for fermentation to take place. So this sugar will turn into like acid, alcohol, because when sugar gets fermented, it turns into another property. So it's okay. Add one tablespoon of cane sugar. And then I'm just gonna take my wooden spoon and just mix it around so all the salt and sugar are completely dissolved into this liquid. And then I'm gonna add all of the sliced vegetables. The onion. the scallion and ginger, and then the two bulbs of garlic. And then I'm gonna let all of the vegetables brine in this liquid for 24 hours. So you wanna make sure you prepare this the day before. I'll place the lid and then leave it out in room temperature, like I said, for 24 hours. So everything, the Napa cabbage, the carrot, and the rest of the vegetables have been brining in its liquid for 24 hours. So now this is the next day. So you wanna get another glass jar like this. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Napa cabbage and I'm just gonna place one right at the bottom, just like this. And then I'm gonna take some of the, some of the garlic, ginger, scallion, 
onion and place it on top of the first layer of Napa cabbage. And then I'll take some of the carrot that's been brining in the salt water and also place that at the bottom. And then I'll take a second layer of the Napa cabbage and now I'm gonna put it in the opposite direction, in this direction. And then I'm gonna repeat the process. It takes the garlic, the onion, and use a spoon that has holes in it so that you don't get the liquid in there just right now, but so I'm gonna add more of the garlic, onion, scallion, ginger to the second layer. And then I'm gonna take that salty watered carrot and also add it on top of the second layer of kimchi. Then I'm gonna take the third layer of kimchi and then I'm gonna go in the other direction again like this. And again, add the scallion garlic. This time I'm using my tongs. Some onion, garlic. I'm gonna leave the kelp out. I'm not gonna use the kelp. But try to transfer all of the garlic, ginger, and scallion in there. Because you wanna really get that flavor into the kimchi. And then I'm gonna add more of the carrots. And leave the carrot juice out. Just take the carrots. And then I'm gonna add my last layer of the Napa cabbage. And you can squeeze out the water a little bit if you want. It does fit in, in one jar miraculously. And then I'm gonna put the rest of the carrot in there. Let me just put this aside. And then I'm gonna add whatever rest of the uh, garlic, ginger, onion there is. I'm gonna remove the kelp. We'll put it here. And then you wanna take that liquid and pour it right into the kimchi. And use all of the liquid. Pour it right in there. it down a little bit and make sure it covers really all of the kimchi and as you can see it's covering pretty much all of the kimchi and then place the lid and now you're gonna leave this out in room temperature between 24 to 48 hours and I like to leave it in the basement in more of a cooler place and I like to leave it out for 48 hours like I said, between 24 to 48 hours, leave it out in room temperature. And then after that time period, you're gonna place it in the refrigerator and let it ferment for about a few days. So 24 to 48 hours out in room temperature and then place it in the refrigerator for like three days. And so after three days in the refrigerator, it'll be ready to eat.
So my kimchi has been in the refrigerator for about three or four days. And so when you take off the lid, you can really smell the kimchi smell, that fermentation smell. It smells really good and refreshing. So what I like to do is I like to take the kimchi and I like to now slice it into smaller bite-sized pieces. And then I like to place it in a smaller jar like this without all of this liquid because if you keep it in this liquid for too many days, the kimchi will start to get really soggy. So that's why I'm transferring it to another jar because I don't want the kimchi to be really soggy. If you don't want the kimchi to be really soggy and you want to keep it in here, then you have to try to eat the kimchi, you know, pretty quickly, like within like a week or two. You know, if you start keeping the kimchi in this liquid for weeks and weeks, then it gets really soggy. And that's why I'm transferring the kimchi to another jar. So that's the process of making kimchi. It is really, really good. It came out crunchy, yet you can really taste the kimchi profile, you know, a little bit of that sourness to the kimchi. It's really, really good. And you know, I was really forced to create my own recipe because it's really hard to find non-spicy vegan kimchi out there. So try this recipe and let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. And if you like this recipe and video, please share it and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to visit all of my spiritual and holistic living tips, just go to my website at yinandyangliving.com. Komasumida.